Oh, hey there, I'm Trent. I've been a concept artist on many popular video games throughout the years, and now I just do YouTube and I teach art and uh, I do some indie game stuff. But uh, today I'm gonna be talking a little bit about this little sweet baby, Horizon Forbidden West. Comes with this little art book, tiny, tiny, tiny little art book. And I'm gonna be looking at some of the different designs and giving you kind of my just immediate reaction. First of all, love this game, really cool. Very interesting designs, some of my favorite, in fact, this might be my goatee. Although there's a there's a game with a lot of souls in it that I haven't seen yet. And uh, there's, there's a lot more coming out this year. So we'll see, man. But this one is really awesome. But anyway, uh, enough about the game. Let's dig into the concept art, the designs, man. This one is really top tier and the concept art is, is nice. Let's take a look. Okay, first and foremost, can we stop making art books that are the size of Blu-ray discs? <laughs> okay, <laughs> this is basically, it comes packed in with the Blu-ray case and it's a nice little package, but it's like, eh, my eyes aren't as good. I want I want a big art book of this and I know it's coming probably, it's just not out yet. So I had to do scans. I took these photos on my phone. First of all, this cover, uh, usually done, these kind of images are done by somebody that is not, uh, in the development team a lot of times because uh, you don't want to be designing a character in an illustration like this usually you wouldn't have uh, an art director looking at all this detail all these background elements and like this is done after a lot of the production art is done and like they already know what the design of this creature is going to be they already know what aloy's armor is going to look like and this is probably like a mid-tier armor not our most blown out armor that's for the elites that you know have been playing for 80 hours it's more like right in the middle like this is the most iconic imagery that sells the concept of the game but it's not concept art the way that you know production concept art will have breakdowns and i'm going to show you a lot more of that and i'm so glad that they included it but these are great images just incredible illustrations if you want to do this kind of stuff the funny thing is is people will credit whoever does this as the character designer whether they did or not. I, I did so many designs for uh, Blizzard stuff that uh, I didn't really get credit for the designs of the characters or the or the locations because an illustrator did a really beautiful painting of it. And that gets sort of like passed around and shown off a lot more. The same with, is true with some images like this. Like you generally don't work out a design for a thing uh, in a painting and an illustration you usually do that in like sketches and the reason is because you you might spend something like a week doing well actually if you're really skilled a pro concept artist would do something like this in probably like two or three days if they're really dragging their feet uh, but this design of this this is like an old world mech and if you look up some of the other designs, you'll see that this was actually, you can see this creature in its completed state. And this is like old wreckage. And I remember this location in the game distinctly. It's very beautiful. Um, and it does, these are mostly these shots are designed to set the mood. So you do these like mood boards for different locations within the game. And I, I did a lot of this kind of stuff because I was primarily a armor designer and a environment concept artist in most of the games that I worked on. So I've done a lot of shots like this, specifically for things like World of Warcraft, big open world kind of games. And you have to have these distinct locations and distinct points of interest. So this would be like what you call a POI or a point of interest. And it's, it's an interesting concept because like, it tells a little bit about the, the savagery of this world. It tells a lot of story here. You know, we've got like this old, old style mech. And by the way, a lot of the more modern mechs throughout the game are much more sleek. This thing is like a little bit more bulky and it's got like, you know, wires hanging out. And uh, when I say bulky, I mean more squared off designs. Squared off designs tend to look more modern or I guess you'd say primitive in the context of a world that's this advanced because a lot of the, the, the monsters or the creatures, the, the robot dinosaurs, the Aloy fights, they're more sleek in design, very futuristic. And that generally means like more curved, smooth, organic looking muscle tissue that looks like it's metal, but it looks like muscle tissue, that sort of a thing. And you'll see more of that in some of the later concepts. But this one is really cool. I like the, the mood and atmosphere of it. Shots like this are also very, very much, uh, very similar. By the way, I love that when I, I, I snap these on my phone, so you might see some reflections here and there, but I can't really appreciate it until you can zoom it into like a full screen. So like, this is really nice. In fact, I'm gonna go even more full screen, go even bigger. 
Yes, uh, just absolutely really cool stuff. This would be such a joy to paint. Oh, I didn't even notice this. Look, there's a little alloy down here for scale. And this is kind of a concept artist trick. And I know a lot of you might already do this and you might already be aware of this, but like, yeah, you put a little figure in there and it shows the immensity. Like this thing, whatever it was, it looks like it was some kind of a mech creature, maybe even a structure. It was enormous and a really nice separation of foreground in silhouette down here. And then it curves. So you get this like flow. This whole shot just flows so well. And what's really cool is, yeah, it does look like the game. Like this did capture the atmosphere and the mood of the final game. And I think there's probably a little bit of photo bashing going on in here, but it's definitely a painting because you can see some brush strokes going through here. Yeah, it definitely feels like a painting, but it's really cool when you can see like a concept artist that did almost exactly, like they know their lighting so well that they just get it looking like what you would see in the final game. Those are just beautiful shots. But this, this is more of what I'm used to. I'm a production concept artist. So, so many times I think artists get, get a little mixed up. They get a little jumbled when they look at ArtStation and like you see designs like this and it probably won't make the front page of ArtStation, but it's so essential for game development. And in fact, I spent a lot of time doing shots like this on uh, like Diablo, for instance, or um, even for environment stuff. If you're working out an architectural design, you don't want to spend three days on each sketch, each individual design. It needs to be done like uh, very fast and very clear as to what the uh, what the intention is. Once once a design gets approved, is when you see those really flashy, fully painted, fully realized kind of paintings. And now, I I can say with some degree of experience, not every studio is like that. Because when we look at the concept art from like Assassin's Creed, for instance, they render the hell out of every character design, even I think in their iterations. And I personally, I think that's a little bit of waste, wasteful uh, for the development team. It can be very discouraging for the artists because a good chunk of your designs won't get approved. The art director has to approve it. The game director has to approve it. They do the play testing. And if people don't like it, then it's it's not going to get approved even if the art director likes it so what i'm saying is is that a lot of times shots like this are a great way to work out your designs and then you do a really polished looking image of the design that was sort of approved i guess you'd say and a lot of this by the way very reminiscent of the monster hunter concept art book i highly recommend you pick up the monster hunter art book as well and the Horizon Forbidden West, no, the Horizon Zero Dawn art book as well, because these guys know what they're doing. And in fact, I wouldn't be surprised if they actually hired some of the same people. But it's really interesting that they do literally line art. Line art is great for modelers to work off of, but when it's in your portfolio, that should be the stuff where you're working out the designs. Then you wanna have like these really highly rendered painted ones, which I don't have an example of on screen and I don't, I don't know that there are already in this book. We'll find out. But I guess what you would see is like something that looks closer to what you would see in game, you know, like fully detailed close up of the face. If there are certain tattoos or face paints, any details, the important question to ask yourself when you're doing character design is what's important to know about the design and focus on that. So a lot of times people get mixed up and they think, well, what's important to know is that it's really beautifully rendered. Look at my painting. But it's really hard to just focus on the design itself and try to just make a design that fits into the world. And when we look at these designs themselves, we're looking at one very interesting breaking of silhouettes, right? So like you've got these things, these are obviously for arrows. Uh, this particular armor, by the way, is is very, uh, there's, there's a, a race of people in Forbidden West that build their entire structures out of plants. They weave together their buildings and they live up in trees. So they're like using roots and, and uh, grass blades to form their huts and their structures. They would also use that to form their armors. And what's really fascinating is when you can start to take plants from that environment, and I wish they, they, they would have shown it because I think I've seen plants that are shaped in some of the ways that you see on the armor. You see them in their world like that 
blows me away. When you see that the the armor that the characters who live in that village are using the, the parts from their environment around them, from the animals in that environment, the furs from those specific animals, the, uh, the metal plating from the machines that they hunt, that they would hunt, they use them integrated into their designs. And by the way, uh, Zero Dawn had great concept art and it had great integration. That integration is, is where the real, the juice is, as far as I'm concerned, as a concept artist, that's the stuff, right? Uh, when, when the artist encapsulates the story of the world into the armor designs of the characters who live there, that's the stuff, that's the juice. That is, that is what really gets my motor running, okay? Because it makes the world so alive. If there's a disconnect, and they're looking like they don't belong in the environment that the, that the designers planted them in, that's when you get these sort of second tier games. And I don't wanna name any specific games because there's some second tier games that have great design or great game design, game play design, but that cohesiveness of the world isn't there. And there's something about Horizon Forbidden West that I think it's getting outshined right now by some other games that are out there, but uh, there's one specifically, I don't wanna use the name, you can know what I'm talking about. I'm talking about that that game with the ring. Uh, and it's getting a little outshine right now because that game is really stellar, I keep hearing. But the thing is, is this game has some, has that juice. It has that unspoken story. And there's something about that that like every game I've worked on, I've infused that like that story, that underlying unspoken story that most people don't really know that they're getting, but they they, they see it over time. And every game that I've worked on has that. And I think Horizon uh, Forbidden West has that. And we're seeing it right here in these patterns, the, the, the armors that they're wearing, the colors of that environment that they're in, the interesting silhouettes. So that's something else I wanted to bring up is like, look at this, the construction of this. If this doesn't just get you juiced up, then I don't know what does, man. If you're an artist, it's like, look at how this wraps around and then you have this flap that kind of sticks up, but then there's just a little bit of a separation because they show just a little bit of skin on this. And then these things that loop the construction, the shape language is consistent. You see these shapes? With the flap kind of construction, once you define how an armor is constructed, how the pieces fit together, keep that consistent across your whole design and you got something, man. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna spend all of my time on this one sheet, look at this. I was planning to go through like at least 10 different images, but I might only get through like five. So this is also, this is a totally different location. The way that the armor is constructed on this and the face paints and the patterns. So these are based off of similar machines in the environment where this armor is located, where these people who use this armor are located. Even this kind of a bulbing kind of a, a scaled armor is like, this, this whole design has a little bit of a bird feel to it, right? So you've got like these things coming off like feathers, almost like a bird. Beautiful, just absolutely brilliant. I love this. And obviously I think that, I'm not entirely sure that these two are related, but I know that these two are. How do I know? The blue face paint with the white pattern across the top over the skull that looks like a skull uh, or a maw of one of the machines that is in the environment where you would you would find these characters right that pattern right look at this pattern with the the triangles the white and red first of all color relationships like can be very powerful for creating a sense of family or a sense of being tied together so like seeing the red feathers here on both of them ties them together. Seeing the color of this, this particular color of blue with the blue face paint ties these two together. This one though, totally different. And definitely these two are not from the same exact like village or the same tribe, right? These are different tribes. You can definitely tell from just looking at these designs. I'm gonna spend forever just analyzing these character designs, so I better move on. So <laughs> going back to some environment shots. Oh, these are the people. These are the plant people. <laughs> the plant people. I forgot what they're called. Uh, they're really amazing. I walked around for just like 
hours looking at how they constructed every one of their little huts because they just used these uh, plant-like uh, vines uh, interwoven together to create this structure of like how these huts would kind of create up into little pea pods and they kind of look like cocoons but uh, really just beautiful integrated by the way into their costuming designs and, and by the way story I'll say it again I said it a million times story is the most important thing in your designs if your designs don't match the story that, that the game designer or the script is saying to the player then your design is a failure. It doesn't matter how awesome it looks. And this is a perfect case where, look at this, that shape that we saw on that armor on the last page, the first one that I pulled up, is present here too. The way that objects are, are woven together with vines, it's like the construction language is consistent. That creates this story. It creates a connection between these characters. When I was a kid, I used to just trace over like superhero costumes and I would just do different lines to create a character design. And I thought, oh, I'm a character designer. That's not character design. Character design is when your character has a story that fits into the world, that fits into the narrative of what the director or the game director is, uh, is telling you, is telling the player. And it also, even more, is if it ties into the quests that you're doing. Oh my God, I'm gonna get into like game design stuff. I don't need to get into gameplay design. We're just gonna talk about the costuming design. Look at this, totally different vibe than anything you've seen before, but it still fits into the same world. Now I will say, a lot of, my only gripe about this game, it's not a gripe that's, how do I say this? It's a gripe that's personal, but like it's got a little bit of that, um, it's got a little bit of that problem that Assassin's Creed has where you everybody is decked out with crazy amounts of detail there's like a lot going on here and even this dude who isn't like i mean maybe it's just that i haven't met him yet but like i don't think he's an important character i think he's just a hunter that lives in this village and uh stuff like this though from a concept artist standpoint really useful for working out your designs i designed a lot of the crests for league of legends and the crests were basically, they were like these designs of these uh, icons and logos that would represent the faction. And everything from that faction was built off of this construction language, this shape language that we created while we were designing these crests. It inf they informed each other, but for the most part, when in doubt, if you were creating a hero that was gonna live in this culture, having this sheet is all that you need because what we can see is yes they're going to use a lot of these like uh feathery kind of things hanging off like foxtail type of designs right they're going to have a lot of these like white robes and yes headdresses that are almost a little bit like asian in inspired like 16th century 17th century asian inspired asian cultures there's a little bit of like weaving Look at this, like how, so you wouldn't, with a character like this, you wouldn't suddenly give them like a big metal chest plate. No, dude, that doesn't match. Unless, of course, if that metal chest plate has parts woven together to connect them. And even then, you might have a metal chest plate that is layered the same way that we see the layering on this down here. And it's a little bit asymmetrical. This is not a, 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 a culture that would build everything symmetrically. In fact, look at this. We have the um, we have this this kind of a thing hanging off of the shoulder to protect one shoulder with a metal part kind of coming up from it. Woven straps, woven straps, woven woven cloth straps holding the parts together. It's not symmetrical on the other side. That's true. It's not true in their icon or their crest thing, but it is true in like what we're seeing here. They have like a cloth robe hanging off to one side. So it's still orderly, but it is asymmetrical. And then we also have like, first of all, I mean, there's also the colors too. You know, the way that the colors are integrating together. I mean, if you used something, oh, there is some metal in there. Look at that. I didn't notice it before, but they did integrate some metal. And that is something that is very much like ties it into the universe of Horizon, where 
they're they're hunting machines they're integrating them into their armor the way that uh tribes and more uh like older uh cultures would have used bones and tusks from the creatures in their environment so they utilize them in the same way i could totally get into the world of designing stuff for horizon oh man and stuff stuff like this this is definitely a painting and we did a lot of these kind of designs on fortnite actually my art house did where it was really just designing buildings and these buildings have to integrate that construction psychology the construction language that is defined either in the armors or it just needs to be consistent with the armors of the people who live here but you definitely see like the way I could, I could imagine, like just from looking at this building, I could design a character that would live in this structure or be part of this tribe because there's so much uh, explained here just in terms of their construction. First of all, I would definitely have some like red metal spikes because they put them on everything. Look at this. And we see it consistently throughout. And by the way, don't have too many elements on one culture. That's a problem that I see a lot of artists will make when they're designing a building or something is they might have like 10 different features going on and they may not be cohesive. And if you start to define that there's all these like jagged metal uh, parts, then you gotta have those jagged metal parts at about the same scale all over your design. Just in the places where it makes sense as a defensive structure though. Like for instance, this is definitely more of a warring tribe. This is a tribe that fights. This is not a tribe that's like peaceful and serene. Whereas like the, the people who live in the trees, they do, they're a little bit, they're, they're not a warring tribe. They want to avoid war as much as they can. In fact, that's pretty consistent with their, their narrative and the story as well, if I'm not mistaken. Whereas these guys are a little bit more aggressive. So like the shapes that you're choosing are going to impact like what you're telling, the story you're telling about the characters. Uh, these, this, I put this in here. I mean, I, I grabbed it. I, I really just grabbed a lot of uh, shots from the best pages. A lot of times people skip over this kind of stuff, but it's so important. It's so integral because it shows you like how things are built. These might be 3D renders, man. If somebody like painted these and actually rendered them this detailed, then they might've spent too much time. <laughs> oh, that's just a sketch. Definitely that bow. Maybe it's somebody's job though. A lot of times when studios get this big, They'll just hire somebody. They'll have somebody who just does the uh, the weapon designs, for instance, and that's their focus entirely. Shots like this are usually pretty damn luxurious. You don't usually get to design shots like this unless you're pretty far along in development and they just don't have a lot of urgent tasks for you. But usually like having characters in your environment is only necessary if you're trying to show what the function of this location is. Usually I'm, I'm doing stuff like this, where it's like designing a, a close-up of a mask, you know? And doing this close-up of a mask, this is really cool, by the way. If you have a character design, first of all, this isn't a legit character design sheet because with a character design sheet, we would usually want to see front, back, and side. In fact, real quick, I'm going to pull up something from the first art book, by the way. So I wanted to pull these up because this is from the art book of the first Horizon game, Zero Dawn. And these are awesome, look at this. So this is how character designs are usually done for production art in games. You see this? Same pose, now this is important because the, the pose needs to show the entire design like of, of the armor. We don't want things obscured. We don't wanna have the character in like this rushing at you dynamic pose. No man, a modeler needs to be able to build off of that. So we've got these, uh, these turnarounds, that's what these are. And sometimes you see these more rendered and more beautified. If the artist gets it approved, sometimes they have the time and the schedule uh, to go in and render the hell out of their designs. But look at this, like the balance of the shaping. So there's, there's this uh, big, large area for the eye to rest. This is probably a little bit of a lower tier armor set. It's probably not like the highest end. It looks very tribal. Although look at this, you've got this variant where you've got, uh, yeah, there's an armor plate over the forehead. What an interesting, con like from a concept artist perspective, Horizon is just such a lush world to dig into because 
you have all these machines and machine parts and you could look at those those machines and go oh i want to use the helmet part like think about it from the perspective of the 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 tribal uh person who who is hunting these machines what would they look at and go like oh man like i want to use the skull of this creature as a forehead plate you know or and then i'm going to pull off the way that native americans would use feathers they use the blades and the tusks and the teeth and the the parts from these machines in their designs but it doesn't look overwhelming it doesn't look like the way that uh, michael bay's transformers would sometimes just kind of look like a big mess of metal it's like and the way that you avoid that is by having these large areas of rest by having these large patterned elements this is really interesting the same way that native americans would take bones from their uh, the animals they would hunt these characters they hunt machines so they would use the metal pieces from a machine and i wish i could pull up the exact machine that they use this from but like they use the parts from the machines to as as if they were bone like if you're a student and you're trying to get work as an uh as a concept artist at least have one of your shots that you really put a lot of your rendering into and get your lighting down and then have your back version or your uh alternate versions as like rough sketches that have just flat colors or simpler rendering on them to show that you're just trying ideas and you're exploring in that world and in that mental state of the like getting into the head of the people who live there getting into the head of the people who are uh, in that environment and if you can close your eyes and imagine what's important to them and how are they perceiving the world around them then you're one step closer to thinking like a video game concept artist oh man this one's cool too because look at the variety it's like they didn't just look at the, the machines around them they're also pulling some things from like i said some old native american designs with these like bell-bottom type leathers you know now my only gripe about this armor design is that there's just no machine parts oh there's one right here on the knee oh and then we've got so we, it's very subtle so maybe this would be like a low tier or more of a stealthy armor. You have to think about the function of that too. Like if you're if you're designing an armor that is for a beefy brawler who's gonna be tanking one of these machines, it's probably gonna be all armored out. It doesn't matter if they make a lot of noise. But if you want a stealthy, a stealthy hunter who's gonna sneak up on these machines, maybe you do want more of this kind of an armor. Now I don't know how much leather would protect against machine claws. Um, you know, so I, I probably would have integrated like some parts, some metal in here, you know what I mean? And also to break the silhouette. But look at the way that they do break the silhouette, eagle feathers. That's another thing to keep in mind. Make sure that your designs have, each one has its own kind of a unique uh, silhouette while still being consistent with the universe that it's in and the lore and culture of the people that that, that character is, is a part of. What is their, their role in that tribe? And if they're like a chief or something like that, you're probably gonna wanna have like more of an elaborate headdress, you know? Like there are so many subtle things that you can communicate through our own world's sort of history of the way that royals wouldn't be prepared for war, for instance, you know? But they might still have really elegant looking armor that's designed more for uh, looking high status than for going to actual war, you know, things like that. So let's get back to Forbidden West for just a couple more. Um, this one, by the way, the reason to do a close-up shot like this is because the tattoos are important, and they are. Two people the, the, in the Tanakh, in this uh, culture, the tattoos are a war story for that character. It's like a badge. So like the way that we would award admirals in the military with uh, badges, uh, and awards and emblems and things we uh we give or these characters would give each other tattoos so i don't know if the blue paint is actually a tattoo but it's interesting and it creates such a really unique kind of a vibe and a feel it's got a little bit of a crazy mad max vibe as far as i'm concerned are these machine parts yeah look at this stuff like this is super important as we get into like ps5 where details are very important look combination of bone Across the top, metal, underplating. Wow, oh dude, that is awesome. And if you're doing something complex like this, that's like a, a shape that's kind of hard to imagine at it at an angle like this, like rotated, 
because like this isn't just a mirror, right? But if it's hard to imagine it like that, you might want to consider like building a basic rudimentary kind of a 3D geometry. Check out some of my tutorials on like uh, blender modeling to see what I'm talking about. Like just to get used to like working a little bit, integrating a little bit of 3D so that you can make sure that your designs are, are communicating that they're 3D, that they turn. Man, look at this, these jagged teeth. It looks like you filed these down to look like jagged teeth and then utilized, oh, just, yeah, this one did deserve a, a, a full page. Oh, nice. So the final, the final image I wanted to show you is this one. Again, you know, when we get the final art book, you're definitely gonna see probably turnarounds for this character because there's a lot of information we don't see in this, just this one shot, like we don't see the back. But I love this design because the character just looks so different than anyone else in the game. Uh, like this, or any of the other tribes, any of the other cultures. You've got uh, this like crazy crow's wing coming off of the back, metal armored spiked shoulders, the black paint, the red paint across the body, the tribal looking tattoos, the metal integrated in the same way that Native Americans would have integrated uh, hard plates of bone into their armor designs. And uh, oh, just really cool. And also, by the way, look at this shapes. This shape is repeated a lot throughout almost this whole universe, by the way. It's funny, it's the same shape that we used in the Draenei icon, uh, the Draenei uh, culture uh, to define the Draenei in World of Warcraft. But yeah, uh, and then we see some consistency with, look at this, uh, shape language consistency. Triangles, spikes, triangle spikes, triangle spikes, aggressive, tribal. These are similar to how old uh, tribes from multiple cultures across the world have, have designed their, their, uh, their armor, have designed their tattoos. And we see it even in, like this is an aggressive fighter type. This dude ain't showing up for tea. You know what I'm saying? This dude is showing up for blood or like, you know, machine hunting. And we see another one of these really cool integrations of bone and, uh, and machine parts. And then they paint the machine parts. So I thought, I thought Horizon Forbidden West was a juicy, sequel, building on everything that they defined in the culture and the world and the, the psychology of the tribes of the people who lived in the world of Horizon. Just what a playground for a concept artist. Good stuff. Okay, dudes, that's it for me on this one. Otherwise, I'm gonna do like four hours just talking about like every design in Horizon and I could do that. Super good stuff, man. This is really juicy, inspiring, inspiring stuff to look at, inspiring designs. And, and the reason to look at other games and other designs like this is to get yourself into the mindset to think the way that what I've been talking about throughout this video. This is, I've been doing concept art for 20 years. I can't look at a game the same way. Um, I have to break it all down. I have to analyze it and I have to appreciate it. And I have to call it out when I see it done very well. And, um, and I hope that you enjoyed uh, this insight into the concept art of Horizon Forbidden West. And of course, as you know, dudes, I do a lot of tutorials and workshops teaching you everything that I know about concept art for games from start to finish and what tasks really look like from an art director, what to expect, how to impress them, all that good stuff to make sure that you have all the success in the world with fulfilling your concept art dream. I've got all that over there on my Gumroad channel, so check the link below and uh, pick something up. And I got a sale going on right now, so don't forget to use that code that you see on the screen right now. And I will see you next Friday or probably sooner. All right, till then, ciao.